Hey guys, it's week three. Uh, it's my off day, so I'm going to be getting some of this uh, project done. I'm going to focus on lighting today, uh, get the wafer lights in, those Lithonia wafer lights um, that I talk about so much. I love those. The color on them is great. They're lighting, the light color. Uh, they're not too bad to install. You just got to have the right tools. We're going to go through that. Uh, hopefully nothing breaks and we get it all done today. All right, since I have shallow attic space, um, and it's really hard to get into the attic, so you don't really know what's up there. I like to, anytime I create a hole, uh, set up the camera, just the cell phone camera, and see see what's up there. And I save that video for future reference in case I'm popping a hole somewhere else. I know kind of what's up there. I think I have an idea because I'm right up next to a vent for this one, but I'm going to stick the camera up there anyway and see what I find. <laughs> All right, break time. I killed the drill. Thank you, Ryobi, but it just couldn't stand up to the one inch plaster we've got in here.
couple of snags so far. Uh, I killed the drill. Um, I guess I burnt it out. I should pay attention to burning smells more often and let the drill cool off. Um, so I had to go at that little quick, quick trip to Home Depot, get some more wiring, just run out of wire. Uh, so about a half an hour, hour long delay, not, not too big a deal. There's Home Depot nearby. Um, ran into a couple snags on this. So of course I hit the beam, um, came a little too close, um, but that's okay because these uh, wafer lights are so thin. I'm just going to put that right up against that beam and it's not going to be an issue at all, as long as I run the wiring on the correct side. Um, so what you want to pay attention with these uh, wafer style lights, they a lot of times come with um, these connector plugs that are really super handy and I love them. They're already uh, connected at the end so you don't have to do a manual splice. You just do a, a nice clean um, strip and you push it right in there and you've got a good connection. The only problem is per code you can only you know do a, a triple splice in one box so you've got to pay attention that uh, you're not uh, running too many wires and trying to daisy chain too many of these guys off of one connection so if you look up i've got two well you can't really see it but i'm going to switch with two power wires coming in one going here if you paid attention earlier in the video i put one here and then one here i've got two rails running off of this so you got the main main one here and then they're kind of daisy chained off that one and the same on this one so i'm running six lights uh, i require two input fires it's not that big a deal because you're just going to splice it in the switch box anyway um, if you've got the job open um, but if you've got the job uh, if you're doing a retro work um, it'll be a little bit more tricky to get that wire uh, spliced in for it enough um, of those wave lights just gotta be careful with that All right, everybody. Um, so this is a moment of truth. You know, you kind of uh, make the connections. Well, it's not the, the moment of truth. You kind of got to turn it on. But um, one thing to pay attention to, I mentioned it earlier about the, the plugs. It's a triple connection, but it's only got two ports. So I made an error. You can see here, I've got three coming out of one hole. You really only can do two because there's only two spare ports on the box so no big deal i ran the power in here um i ran it a link over here and then i ran a long one back over that way so that i only have two maximum of two coming out wires coming out of one hole so hopefully you can see this we're going to make the connections it's really quick really easy you take the three you your black white and copper Find your black, white, and copper. So we have a copper connection here. You push all the way until you see it hit the front of the plastic, and that's pretty much it. I've already gone and spliced these to make this video, video a little bit easier for me, but I uh, took off about an inch of that insulation. That's all you need. If it's if you don't cut off enough, it'll be um, hard to get it through and make the end touch the the tip of your conductor touch the end of the plastic here but you can always just pull it back and take off a little bit more insulation make sure you get yourself a nice little uh, wire um, sleeving tool makes the job a lot easier I used to use other random tools until I realized I was doing it the hard way that one is in it's a little, little tight when you've got multiple conductors in here, so pay attention. And then the last connection. Okay. Now that I'm done with that, I immediately realize I've done it all wrong. I'm supposed to route the wires through the, the whole the side of the box here, so let me undo that. In order to undo it, you've got to just rotate it back and forth a little bit. They're not intended to be mechanical connections. They are electrical connections. I'll show you the, the item that I use. 
to make that mechanical connection to make sure that if you're running through the attic, which obviously in my case you can't, but if you're pulling on something else, your wires don't come loose and start, you know, conducting to each other. What you've got to have is one of these half inch or three quarter inch knockout um, retention clips. All you have to do is take the clip, push it in the side of the box, and then once you take your wire, make sure you, you've got the uh, pointy end sort of in the box. There's metal ones as well. I found find no real difference uh, between the two. The metal ones are a little bit more rigid, but they're also a little more hard to use. I just go with the plastic ones. Those are fine. So you push your wire in, and that's what it looks like. And now the wire is not, not going to come out. That's your mechanical restraint. Putting in another one on the other side. These are intended for one wire only. The box has four knockouts. Well, this particular box has four knockouts. You're going to make one knockout per um, cable that you're putting through here. I'm going to drop my... Oh, okay. Oh, and I dropped one of the uh, LED lights. That ought to be fun. So we'll see if that guy works. All right, the box is sealed up. My cables are restrained, physically restrained. They're uh, safely um, tucked within that box. You take this connection, make sure there's a little slot on there to make sure you hook it up correctly. Just pull your connector back, push it in, make that connection, and then you screw it down. All right, with these, it's kind of weird, but all you have to do is tuck them up here. That's what the manufacturer says in their instructions and in their um, on their website. Their instructional video says exactly that, as weird as it is. If you've done other electrical projects, you know that you've got to restrain all the boxes and parts and pieces so nothing moves. So, there you go. All right, I'm going to show a little bit about how the wiring works and while I'm installing a switch here, doing a little bit of a up-close shot. These are the two that are coming from the lights that I showed you earlier, and um, this is the one coming from power. So this is your neutral ground and this is your hot. Um, what you're doing is interrupting the hot going from here to, to these two. What all I'm going to do is splice the, the neutrals and the grounds and then just run the hot from one side of the switch and connect these to the other side. I'm going to take the sleeving off. All right, I'm going to show a little bit about how the wiring works and while I'm installing a switch here, doing a little bit of a up-close shot. These are the two that are coming from the lights that I showed you earlier, and um, this is the one coming from power. So this is your neutral ground and this is your hot. Um, what you're doing is interrupting the hot going from here to, to these two. What all I'm going to do is splice the, the neutrals and the grounds and then just run the hot from one side of the switch and connect these to the other side. I'm going to take the sleeving off of this wire here. Again, I highly recommend a tool like this because taking off sleeving is super easy with this guy.
doesn't seem to work. Turn the lights on. And their lights off. Now this is a fancy switch. Uh, the reason it's doing that is because I've got it uh, to where it's dimming. Apparently the um, the wafer lights are not compatible with the type of dimming that the switch does. So I'm just going to put a regular switch on it and call it a day. Uh, that's pretty much it for this project. It works. I'm happy with it. Just change out the switch and we're good to go. Thank you everybody.